using professionals were evident in our findings when paraprofessionals and parents used the scale. This is an extremely important finding because it suggests then that when paraprofessionals and parents are using the scale that, that they're interpreting items and using them in the same way as the professionals are when you get the exact same factor analysis results. I think that, that service learning really does set the stage for students to get exposure to a variety of people who live in a variety of circumstances with a multitude of, 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 of problems that they're, they're grappling with. Um, to some extent, all of us uh, here come from some position of, of privilege. And I, I think that if, if somebody isn't out there working in the front lines, if you will, and really exposed to, to uh, the, the agencies who on a day in and day out basis are, are doing the best they can to, to basically help these people survive, homeless people survive. Uh, I think that, that that really is, what students tell me is that it's a major eye-opening experience for them and that uh, some of them uh, will get involved in this a little later in their, their stay here, uh, junior, senior year, and often th they, they will express regret that they didn't get involved early on uh, because they feel that, that their, their courses would have meant so much more to them if, if they would have been involved in, in these projects early on and really see the real life manifestations of these concepts that they're learning in the courses. And so this is what I think is really important about the common academic program, especially from my perspective with the use of service learning, is that it, it does get students, it thrusts them out there into the community early on and, and I think really sets the stage for them to get the most, to become for us to educate the whole person and for them to really uh, realize their inherent potentialities and, and become what they, they were meant to become. At growing up in western Pennsylvania, we, we really didn't have very much. My mother was raised in West Virginia in poverty, without running water, without electricity. My father was, grew up in Pennsylvania had to quit school after the eighth grade and went to the military to, to, to send money home. I was the youngest of four. I am the first one in, in my family, either side of my family, to, to go to college. Uh, and that even though the financial support wasn't there, the, the moral support was, was always there. And that, that really meant the world to me. Sometimes my students uh, tease me a little bit because they come in and they look at my file, filing cabinet and they say, gee, if, if people didn't know better, they'd think you have six or seven kids, but um, I just have a lot of pictures of them. And even when I get up more updated pictures, I, I have trouble taking the older ones down. Tracy and I have been married for 25 years, and I took a year off after my undergraduate work, and I worked as a crisis worker. Which, and so we, we had some pretty interesting dates because uh, sometimes I would be called out to have to go to the emergency room to make decisions about whether somebody should be involuntarily or committed or, or whatever, right, right in the middle of, of a date, you know. Uh, so uh, the, the, the fact that she stuck with me through that probably speaks well. <laughs> and, and so that from this you could actually go out and with proper supervision use this instrument. Uh, Susan, as, as you know, is a, a doctoral candidate right now at Miami University. We ended up buying uh, Irma Bombeck's uh, original house in Centerville, which was a very, very interesting connection with her being, you know, such a big figure from, from UD. Now, I, I always joke around with my friends that uh, please tell people that, that this is the house she lived in before she became rich and famous, or otherwise people, someone might have a grandiose idea of, of, <laughs> of the community that I live in. Lovas was interested in comparing uh, what he called an intensive treatment group. There were 19 people in... First of all, I like that it's not just like a lecture. Like showing more sensitive changes I think would be better for the outcome. He likes to interact with his students. What would be the purposes of this type of convergent validity? What would... And I really like his approach to teaching because he takes an integrative approach and he combines teaching with research and service. 
I started using service learning in the 90s, and this was for that project that, that I received the, the service learning awards. Students need to be able to apply theory and research to real life examples. My current emphasis is on service learning projects focused on homelessness. And these students will work in homeless shelters uh, such as uh, Daybreak. I think that, that service learning really fits perfectly with our community oriented mission because it, it really links uh, research and theory to leadership. In, in the community and uh, I think that in addition to fostering foundation knowledge and professional knowledge in students we really need to facilitate the development of what Altman called socially responsive knowledge that that students uh, need to be able to apply theory and research to real life examples and the best way for this to happen is for them to be out there in the community working in these agencies. Um, my experiences here have definitely helped shape my interests and my goals um, for my career. Um, one thing I've done a lot of work with um, clients who have been victims of family or intimate partner violence. So we're going to talk about self-awareness I mainly do work with the token economy and so it's basically how clients here earn their rental subsidy and it's really neat because I get to meet them the second they move in and I really get to see how they develop here and take a hand in trying to help them succeed here. My graduate students and I have done a fair uh, amount of that research and we published it and uh, it, it really does demonstrate you, you have a two groups of students and uh, you know one group is is participating in the service learning the other students are in the same course but not doing the service learning on exams uh, objective exams they will start out at about the same place but throughout the course of, of semester the uh, the service learning students will become increasingly superior in their exam performance and the reason seem to be that they see something in this, the agency where they're working and it makes them more interesting, interested in going back and reading in the textbook. So uh, real, real briefly, uh, a lot of the, the early research focused on the benefits of service learning for students, which are academically oriented, but also variables such as uh, community service self-efficacy, uh, a, a person feeling as though they're more competent to go out and make a meaningful contribution to the community and, and social responsibility. More recently uh, in the field and, and a, a recent uh, thrust in our research is to also demonstrate the community benefits of those projects. So most of my, my projects at this point have kind of a, um, a dual purpose in terms of assessment. We're, we're looking for ch positive changes in students, but at the same time trying to document that these projects actually improve the agency's functioning in some way. At first, you know, uh, someone in charge of an agency just isn't sure about this, but then once they see our students for a semester, they just keep asking for them to come back. And uh, of course, wh what's really fascinating is that some of the students will continue to do service even though the quote-unquote course requirement is over. Well, this is, this is the only class where I was, um, I was approached with this, this opportunity. It was surprising in that no other professor had asked me to in, be engaged in service learning. And I, it stuck to me so much, two years later, I'm still involved with Dr. Reeb and service learning and homelessness, and I go all the time down to St. Vincent's and, and still help out. So I developed this community service self-efficacy scale it's based theoretically on Bandura's self-efficacy theory. And so if you can foster mastery experiences in students as they're out there working in the community, you, you will be improving their sense of self-efficacy. The psychoecological systems model is a, an integrative uh, approach that I developed in conjunction with one of my graduate students a few years ago, Susan Folger. This, this model integrates three theoretical developments, the biopsychosocial model. It also incorporates the Bandura's principle of reciprocal determinism. Finally, the, this model, which my, my students fondly refer to as PESM as an acronym, incorporates the 
ecological system model developed originally by Yuri Bronfenbrenner, which looks at all of the layers of, of uh, systems surrounding the person. And this, this model, PESM, is a driving force behind the, the course that I've developed for the Common Academic Program in the fall, which uh, we, we've called Engage Scholarship for Homelessness. And I encourage them to work with me at a level where they can earn co-authorship on papers and, and presentations at professional conferences. And, and that, that type of research mentoring, I think, uh, is a very important aspect of teaching beyond the, the classroom. I've worked toward a model where I really treat them more like junior colleagues than I do students. And I really honestly uh, feel like that brings out the best in people. That uh, people really uh, seem to, to develop the perspective of, wow, this guy is, is really expecting a lot from me, but he's, he's showing me this, this respect by offering me to, to, an opportunity to get on a publication. And they will work very, very hard and, and learn a lot. And, and I really, you know, I had a, a, a few just exceptional students in the past that, that working with them was more like working with a colleague than it was a student. And that made me start thinking in a different way. Maybe this is how we should be working with it, with our students in an, apprentice, in an apprenticeship model. Maybe they should be thought of as junior colleagues as opposed to, to, to just students. And I, and I think that that really brings out the best in them.